Christina commented in one of the uh, videos that I've previously posted, and she asked a couple questions here. What if I don't have a video on the slide, but instead a series of buttons, uh, i.e. button one, button two, button three, and each have a separate image and audio file you need to display when the user clicks the button? Is there a way to stop the audio triggered by a previously selected button? Well, Christina, there is uh, a way. There, in fact, there might even be more than one way. Um, I've come up with a solution to what I think will work well for your situation. Uh, again, I can't emphasize enough. There's probably 10 different ways you could do this. But here's what I've uh, decided to go with. So in this particular case here, what I've got is I've got three different objects on my screen. In this case, they're just smart shapes but they could just as easily be um, objects like uh, images or something like that, or another type of smart shape, and, uh, or a text caption or something like that. What I've done is I've pre-recorded some, some audio, some narration to go with each one, and you can actually select those to be played once the text for button one or button two or button three is displayed by going to the Options tab and adding it to your audio section here. Now keep in mind the default state for all three of these objects is that they're set up to be not visible in output. And I've written some, or I'm going to write some advanced actions so that when you press button one, button two, or button three, it will display each one of these texts one by one. And uh, along with each text, will will get played that audio file with it. Now, incidentally, uh, one of the things that you can do with, uh, with these buttons here is that the buttons themselves can stop slide audio. Now, I've already got some slide audio, and if you take a look at my, my timeline down here, there's a, a clip of audio where I just give instructions um, on what to actually do when the user arrives on this slide. Here's what that sounds like. Click the buttons on this slide. Once you're ready to continue, click next to proceed. So pretty straightforward, um, you know, and, and obviously if someone is very quick to respond, they might click one of these buttons before that audio finishes. So I want to be able to stop that audio. So in, in Captivate 9, you have the option to stop slide audio when clicked. You could, of course, when paused, uh, but in this case, I'm just going to say when clicked and do the same thing for button two and for button three. So anytime someone clicks one, two, or three, any audio, slide audio that's still playing at that point will be interrupted at that point. But we're not finished yet. We need, of course, uh, to be able to trigger the display of each of these three objects. So we need to write a short little advanced action for those. So I'm going to start off, actually what I'll do is I'll select all of my buttons and go into the actions and we'll execute advanced actions. Now none have been written so far. Um, I've already gone ahead and checked off hand cursor and disable click sound. Not a fan of the inbuilt click sound and you know the hand cursor just gives user of users a visual cue uh, when they hover their mouse over top of those buttons. Um, obviously only applicable for, for using on desktop, but good, good thing to do, good habit to get into. And so we're going to start writing uh, an advanced action script. So I'm going to click the advanced actions icon, and that's going to open up the advanced actions window. Now, there are two types at the time of Adobe Captivate 9, there are two types of actions available standard actions and conditional actions. Um, this one doesn't need to be a conditional action because of the types of actions that we're going to run down in the window below here. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to change the state of the button that's been clicked. So I'm going to press this, the letter C on my keyboard till I get change state of, in this case here, button 1. And I'm going to change that to selected. And that's going to give it a different uh, visual appearance. I've already gone ahead and created uh, a selected multi-state for this multi-state object. 
Now, in case I've already clicked button two or three, I want to change the state of those buttons back to normal, just as a precaution. Okay, so that takes care of the whole toggle effect of clicking these buttons. Now we want to be able to show one of these text boxes, or in this case, a smart shape, and hide the other two in case they've previously been displayed. Uh, but the first thing I'm actually going to want to do is stop any triggered audio, because that was something you identified as being important for your project. And there's actually an action for that. And if you just press the S key on your keyboard with the drop down menu selected, it'll come up right away. Stop triggered audio. So if there's the audio still playing from one of the previous smart shapes, you want to stop that first. And then we're going to show text for button one and H hide. text for button two, and also hide, text for button three. And that's pretty much our advanced action. Uh, and we're gonna duplicate this uh, a total of two more times. We're gonna create something very similar for button two and button three. Let me give this a name. We'll call this uh, button one actions. And we'll save as an action. So now you can see under the Actions tab, and remember, of course, I selected all three of my buttons at the same time. Uh, execute Advanced Actions will be Button 1 Actions. Now we're going to click on Button 2, go into the Advanced Action window, and we're going to duplicate this because we're going to reuse much of this, uh, this script here in the, the next action. So let's duplicate that. Start off by giving it a unique name. In this case here will be button two actions. And let's just change what needs to be changed. So we're going to change the state of button one back to normal. We're going to change the state of button two to selected because that's one of the differences here. Uh, stop triggered audio will remain the same. Uh, in this case here, we're going to show text for button two and hide text for button one. So it's real easy to, uh, to just make a few modifications and now I've got a whole other advanced action script. So let's update that action close. Let's make sure that the button two is pointing at the right advanced actions. And now we'll do a similar change for button three. So again, advanced actions icon. Don't start editing right away. Make sure you duplicate that first uh, advanced action that you created. Let's relabel it before we forget. This is going to be button three actions. And we're going to change the state of button one to normal, but we're going to be selecting button three. Again, also stopping the triggered audio. And instead of uh, showing button one, we're gonna show button three, or the text for button three. And let's make sure we're hiding the text for button one. So again, update that action. Again, make sure button three is pointing at the appropriate advanced action. And I think we're good to go. So just to recap, uh, the slide will start off by playing the slide audio that I recorded earlier. And as I click button one, button two, and button three, it will play the audio that's been attached to these text items that you appear that appear on the screen. These are smart shapes and I've added text to each one. But uh, the the clicking of the buttons will also stop 
any previously triggered audio as well. So let's just do a preview and see how that looks. We'll do a preview HTML5 in browser. Click the buttons on the slide once you're ready. Here is some audio for the text. Here is some audio for the text associated and here is some audio associated with the text for button three. So as you were able to see, and let me just reload this once more, you'll see I'm able to interrupt the slide audio by clicking any one of the buttons. And of course I have my selected state for those buttons displaying, and of course it only displays the text for button three if I click on button three, and so on. And of course, it will also stop any previously triggered audio as well. So let's just do that again real quick. Click the buttons on the slide. And I'll interrupt it. Here is some audio for the text associated with button one. Here is some audio and I'll interrupt it again. And here is some audio associated with the text. And of course, it still here works if I go back. So that works quite well. The only thing I would caution users um, or caution uh, fellow Adobe Captivate designers like yourselves is that you probably want to consider uh, accessibility. And the reason I mention that is that it's real easy to do things like closed captioning for slide audio for narration over top of the slide. But because we're pressing buttons and activating audio, this is becoming uh, asynchronous. In other words, uh, the closed captioning is not going to run for these text items that are displayed here, nor are they going to run for the audio that's being heard in the background as well. Uh, so it's something to think about. Uh, of course, if, if you're not designing with accessibility in mind, then this will work great. Uh, if not, you're going to need to somehow display the text associated with the audio for each of these items on the screen, if it's not already in the uh, smart shape on your screen. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help building your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at paulwilsonlearning.com. Follow me on Twitter at PaulWilsonLD, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.